Thank you very much, Chair, and I will let you know that I will be splitting my time with my colleague, Ms. Cousy. Mr. Abbo, you mentioned in your opening remarks and again in your, one of your most recent responses that there was an initial list of 39 properties. Can you table that list with the committee and include the locations and prices, please? Thank you for the question. Uh, we'd be happy to. Thank you very much. And, and quickly, I'm going to follow up on um, a couple of lines of questioning by a couple of my colleagues. Um, Mr. Abbo, I, I thought I heard you say that you were made aware by, by GAC of the need for renova renovations, but not to the extent that they um, have indicated to the committee. Can you tell me what um, the impact on a unit, on the sale price of a unit, would be knowing that there are significant repairs needed for that? Thank you for the question. I think the easy way to answer it is uh, that uh, as you tour a new property, uh, uh, depending on the requirements of the buyer, um, you know, those, those repairs will either be important or lesser important depending on the final use of the property. Um, in the specific case of 550 Park Avenue, uh, the pricing that has been set went through a very rigorous process that we always apply to any residence that's being uh, posted for sale. And included in that consideration is the uh, potential need for repairs to be decided by the final purchaser, of so, course. So really quickly, it, it, the price yeah. included what the, what the, um, what GAC had indicated as the need for $2.6 million in repairs. The price set on that unit reflects that? Uh, the price set for the unit reflects that there is a potential for uh, what we call um, upgrades to the unit. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, my first question is for either witness. Do either of the witnesses have knowledge as where to where the current Canadian representative to the United Nations resides? I can answer that question. I do have knowledge. Please go ahead. Should I share where he resides? Okay. Is that public information? I'm not sure if... Uh... <laughs> well, I, if, if it's the same information that I have, it's that he currently resides in the Park Avenue residence of the former, uh, the, the former residence of the same building of the former uh, residence of the Consul General. So uh, this is my understanding, and this is my understanding that it is, uh, and I'm seeing you nod, so that it seems to be you're in agreement that you are. So it's very interesting to me. Um, does the current Canadian representative to the United Nations have any plans to, to sell this resident, to, to leave this building and find another residence? Are you aware I of that? The question. I, I believe that's a uh, answer best uh, provided by Global Affairs. Uh, I am not aware of a current plan to, sp to dispose of it. Interesting. It's just very interesting to me that this previous residence was not good enough for the Consul General, yet somehow it remains good enough for the Canadian representative to the United Nations. There just seems to be some type of disconnect there that this residence was good enough for uh, one Canadian representative in NYC, but not good enough for the Consul General. Very interesting. Mr. Chair, I'm just going to summarize in saying how very disappointed I am in this government to see value for money for Canadians comparative to the previous Harper government. The previous Harper government sold the Dublin residents for $10 million. We sold the entire Hong Kong mission for $86 million in 2016. We sold McDonald House for $530 million above. This was above ask, ask, asking price, unifying two buildings in purchasing the house next to Canada House for a savings of $250 million. And finally, Mr. Chair, I'll note that we listed our Coral Gables, the official residence in Miami, a residence I have visited for $5.2 million. In closing, Mr. Chair, I'll say 
Under the previous administration, the Harper government, we sold more than 80 diplomatic properties for more than $720 million. This is the type of value for money that Canadians deserve, and Liberals should come to understand this. Thank you very much. Here, here.